My name is George Callahan. I'm a prisoner for all my life here at St. Peter's Cathedral, and I am your local historian for the day. I'd love to welcome you in and give you a tour of our, our lovely gem of a church, as Bishop Curtis, our second bishop, said. So, we'd like to have you come in. And I want to welcome you to your cathedral. And I take cathedral because cathedral comes from cath cathedra, which means chair or seat, and which is right over here is the bishop's chair and seat. And when, as the bishop of the cathedral, he is the pastor, and the resident priest is the rector. And I've been in many cathedral in my time. I'm a little senior citizen at this point, but I've been into St. Patrick's. I've been to the Basilica in Baltimore. I've been into the National Shrine of the Mac Conception in Washington. All wonderful, awesome, overwhelming, big. But the cathedral here at St. Peter's is more of a place of comfort and peace and when I come into this cathedral, which I've been doing all my life, I feel it at home. The first window is the Adam and Eve being ejected from the garden. Interesting part about this window is that the Blessed Mother with the child is highlighted. And no matter how gloomy it gets, the Blessed Mother and the child are always highlighted. It's the only stained glass window in the cathedral that has that aspect kind of. So it can be pretty gloomy, you know, but the Blessed Mother is always highlighted. At the cathedral, unlike most churches, the cathedral has the whole history of the church in its stained glass windows, starting with the birth of the Christ child and uh, the Holy Family back in here in St. Joseph and his dying. And uh, up above the high windows, there's a, the Christ child talking with the elders in the temple. Our next window up here, which is also, I think, important, shows the marriage feast of Cana. It shows a change of water into wine. They did very uniquely with their stained glass by showing the change from white to red going into the urns. Yeah. And one of the, one of the features of the uh, of the cathedral windows is that we do have the birth of John, the birth of Christ, and again, to the other side, the ending of his mission and what he came, came for. And so it, it sort of parallels, as I say, Adam and Eve and Christ triumphant. I see, again, both of them sort of the Alpha and the Omega. Whether it was planned that way, I don't know, but it, it's very significant. So. But this shows a Blessed Mother Assumption into heaven and also a coronation, it's a queen of heaven. So the windows date, from what I understand, about 1900. And uh, back when uh, they were doing some repair, it turned out over time all the lead and the supports began to sag. So they had to literally take this whole window out and ship it to Philadelphia for repair. And since then, they've added supports. An interesting, they had to add supports without having the supports and braces get in the way of the picture itself. For instance, at the top, you see Jesus at the Last Supper, over his head is a little loop, so that wouldn't interfere with, uh, with the whole scene. Yeah. I'm a believer in miracles and angels. We have 45 angels taking care of the cathedral. There's a bunch of them up there. But uh, they used to have, um, on the, the 19, 1900s, they had uh, angels on each side of the high hole. Um, when they took that apart, the two angels were moved out to the churchyard. The churchyard, there's an altar, and there's an altar, uh, angel flanked on each side of the altar. Uh, what's, which I tell the people when they're looking here 
at the angels back here with the with the holy water font. But you can look at it, you can see the details of the toenails and the fingernails and things like that. And the kids will love that. Now this is originally the uh, south side of the little 30 by 40 church. And that was out to West Street. Mm. Originally when they were repairing and re-supporting the, the ceiling, a lot of tombstones were put outside and stacked. So when they were finished, we found the path, the original path that went around the south side of the church. And so we cleaned that up and set the tombstones in. And it's, from what you can see in this window, a lot of them are the young Irish who probably died working in the powder mill. A while back, a family, was a woman was looking for her great-great-great-grandfather who had died in the cathedral and supposedly buried here. But um, she couldn't find any location. So she heard that I was doing the history and all that. So she gave me a call and we came down and found her, her ancestor's gravestone, and which was a joyous day for her so that she could add to her history of her family. So, and it showed a young man 30-some years old, got killed in the Brandywine, or got killed in the powder mills. There's one here, Ann Sheridan, and uh, no relation to the actress, but they think she was related to Sheridan of the Rough Riders in the Civil War. Yeah, this one, and the tombstone's right here. It said, memory of their son James, who departed this life, age 11 months. August 20, 1828. My infant dear took from my breast. You will be sorely missed. He was my only one. <laughs>